Hello YouTube, what is going on? Um, today I would like to go over kind of my uh, last epoch build and kind of how I progressed from start of game to like mid early stuff thing die. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of people when they look at a build in last epoch they might be thinking to themselves like I understand that I need all this stuff but like how do I get from starting the game to that gear and kind of like the progress line? So I'm kind of here to explain to you kind of what you should be looking for when running your early monoliths. So uh, I'm going to have some background gameplay, just kind of playing in the background. And then uh, we will be going over the build and uh, what I'm kind of doing. So uh, I'm taking the cut and paste fireball build i'm using a website called maxroll.gg for my build guide and i've kind of been going from there but uh from my background knowledge of poe i know that getting end game gear isn't just as easy as finding it or crafting it even you have to work your way up to it which means you have to make gear that might be suboptimal or just not the ideal stuff until you get to the ideal stuff, you know? And then how to find upgrades and kind of how you keep progressing forward, what to do. So, uh, I'm doing the fireball build. Probably somewhere on the screen I'm showing right now the, the, the stats page. So you can see I have capped res. My armor is pretty low. Uh, my HP is also pretty low, but the, the capped res is really important for getting through the early monoliths. And then uh, also having high DPS so that you can shred through monsters that might be a higher level than you before they can hit you, obviously. And then also it helps to run Flame Ward and Teleport as like defensive ways to keep yourself out of harm's way. So yeah, the, the gear that I'm kind of working with to start, some of it's Exalted gear with just like a good mod that I then crafted on. I actually recently just got a nice chess piece. Uh, maybe I'll show a screenshot on the screen of my new chess piece because the one that I recorded definitely is uh, an older version. I, I dropped a 24% increased health I exalted mage body armor, so I'm using that now. But uh, yeah, so basically with the gear, I focused on getting my Ellie res capped and then I went into Fizz and Void res and then I did Poison and Necrotic last. And it helps to kind of stage your resistances and not try to answer all of them at once when you're first building your gear because you can come across issues of like uh all of my gear all of my resistances across the board is 50 percent, and i have no idea how to push extra levels of that percent in in that resistance it'd be more important that you can cap out resistances so that you can break down which resistances types you still need on gear and how much of it you need Instead of trying to get seven different resistances on different pieces of gear, you might be able to just get one resistance and max it with two modifiers on items. Uh, so that's kind of my thought process for what I was building for resistances and how to craft resistances on gear and not overlap or scramble yourself in any way. Uh, I do have a bit of necrotic resistance overlap right now. I'm in the middle of trying to find a new relic base to work off of. Right now, I am res capped without my relic equipped. So yeah, it kind of is just overinflated and I could probably add either uh, health or something else uh, instead of resistances on my uh, relic. So at the moment, my build, uh, th the way the damage scales mainly is through crit chance, crit multi, uh, any elemental or spell da damage, increase and fire damage increase as well as flat intelligence and then attunement is like a flex stat it's good in the gloves but it's like not something to prioritize but yeah so that's kind of my damage mods that i was focusing on trying to work on so yeah at the end of the day how did i get this gear basically um you run the monoliths and you pick up rare gear with decent forging potential craft whatever you can on that stuff because crafting is king in this game you can make gear be 
10 times better than anything you'll find on the ground if you can find like uh, a rare with like one good one modifier that you really want and then maybe you could try using a rune of removal to get rid of the other one or you could try to even use the glyph of chaos to roll up into the mod you want it depends on how big the mod pool is and how lucky you think you are but because of how often you get crafting materials in this game it's really it's always worth trying at least and experimenting with rares and then you'll notice that exalted items have way higher forging potential which allows you to really get good items off of exalted items so to uh to put it straight basically what you want is your exalted items to drop with modifier that matters on a base that matters and then you want to glyph of chaos extra stuff into stuff you actually want if that is something that you can do you might have to risk a rune of removal it really depends on what you're dealing with like a tier 5 mod you can't roll up on glyph of chaos and you might brick completely and miss the mod it depends like i said it depends on how big the mod pool is so take take the risk if you think it's worth it uh kind of hedge your bets and figure out what to do with crafting it's always situational it depends on what you pick up right Right now, I'm level 82 and I'm doing level 90 rifts. I call it a rift. Uh, Diablo head over here. The monolith, I mean. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing level 90 monoliths right now and they're, they're going smoothly. Yeah, I'm taking a little more damage than I wish I was. I think it's because my armor is low. But, you know, I'm working on that. I'm also working on increasing my max health. But I'm just trying to find uh, better bases to work off of. Like, my rings are dog shit. My rings are just awful. They're good for what they do at the moment. Uh, one of them's capping my uh, necrotic res, quote unquote. I have so much overinflated necrotic res at this point that I probably don't even need it. And then one has crit strike avoidance, and then int fire damage, increased crit strike, elemental damage. Uh, you know, it's just generally good modifiers, not the best modifiers. Ideally, I would want two exalted uh, int rings. And then I would work off of that because stacking intelligence is where I want to be. Uh, so I'm trying to put it on as many items as I can. But, you know, you kind of have to go with what you get. So uh, hopefully that kind of explains the gist of how I'm going about playing the early mid game. Or early mid end game, I guess. I don't know what to call it. But just the, the, the end game, but not at the end. It's the... The monoliths before the empowered monolith, like that transition stage, yeah. Yeah, you kind of just want that section to be as uh, as easy as possible and use it as a way to kind of get your character set up for the end game when you're uh, max level. And because this game is so self-item based and uh, self-found based, it's it really does require you to find what you need. Also, it's important to know that if you're chasing a, a unique item, it's not always correct to be farming the rifts for them. Uh, I call it rift again, monoliths. Uh, you don't always want to be chasing monoliths for your unique items. Sometimes you can find them way easier in lower level areas. It depends on the item level. For instance, prism wraps. It is a level 25 base item. So why would I be farming a level 90 monolith for my prism wraps i wouldn't instead i would be farming uh level 25 areas to try and find it obviously i need one with legendary potential so i'll be digging for that for a while uh in the meantime i'm using whatever i can find because this game is so heavily based on exalted items or just crafted on gear as being the best gear and then like a couple uniques here and there being good it follows a very similar system approach to path of exile and for that reason, it's very easy to make a build out of nothing compared to trying to chase a unique or a set item that you need and having your build hinge completely upon you finding it or not. For instance, I have no unique items and I have no set items in my build right now. My endgame build, best in slot, requires two uniques, I think, and those uniques... Um, they're not that hard to find if I'm actively trying to get them. But I'm not currently actively trying to get them. I'm waiting till I unlock Empowered Rifts and I cap out to start focusing on my best in slot gear. 
Also note that sometimes if you're searching for best in slot gear, even though it's a best in slot, it doesn't mean that it's best in slot by itself. It means that it's best in slot with all the other best in slot stuff. So like for instance, prism wraps right now, uh, if I equip just base flat prism wraps, even potentially a legendary potential one, it might be worse than the chest piece I'm wearing currently. That's because uh, the rest of my gear isn't tailored to work with that confine. Right now, all of my gear works together well, but as soon as I change something, it might interact with how the other pieces affect me. So you got to understand that sometimes if, it, if you find a best in slot piece, you might just want to put it in your stash until you get all of your best in slot pieces and then put them all on at the same time. And that way you don't screw up your resistances or struggle or juggle or mess with that at all. That doesn't become an issue for you. Uh, you really want to ignore that aspect because that can become a headache. You can end up bricking and destroying items that way. So instead, craft towards your best in slot and craft towards a cohesive set of armor that you can then slap on and be like, yes, this is the gear that en that I'm ending with, you know? This is my penultimate build gear. Of course, along the way, if a gear piece is just better in that slot as a best in slot, yeah, equip it. If it works together with everything else, yeah, equip it. But just don't mindlessly slap that on and be like, oh, it's the website says it's better, it must be better. It's not. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes your resistances will fall apart. So just kind of consider that. Uh, as for idols go, idols really are just what they are. Um, you just have to get lucky and find the ones that work. Otherwise, what I've been using is a uh, chance to ignite on hit plus spell fire damage. I find those to be pretty good. And then also the uh, two high, one wide, stout idols that have increased fire damage and chance to hit, ignite on hit as well. And then I have one ornate idol, like the four long, one, one high idols with uh, increased fire damage, doubled if you have over 300 max mana, which I currently don't have 300 max mana, which again I'm working on. I need to get my upgraded relic so that I can up my mana. Because right now mine's only giving me plus 16 mana. I think it's only like tier 1 or 2. Tier 2, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a bad relic. I'm ashamed of it. But yeah, so consider that. Consider the facts of what's making your build function. What's the best pieces. What will answer the problem you're having. And solve those problems as you progress. And don't worry too much about chasing endgame gear. Just chase what you need next and take it step by step because I can find myself a lot of the time going far too uh, narrow in my approach and then I can end up uh, spending way more time trying to get a build together and can end up just kind of suffering and dying constantly because my gear isn't ready for farming harder content. Also, last thing I'll say, gold, you might be wondering what's gold for. Um, or you might already know. I mean, the best thing that I know to use gold with right now is the uh, Lightless Arbor Keys. You go in with, say, 600,000 gold or so, 600, 700,000 gold, go run a Lightless Arbor and then just smash the offer button over and over and over again at the shrine at the end and just say yes to everything. And then you, sl you open those chests and you will see just plethora of of loot it's crazy good loot but yeah if you're always ever wondering like how you to find exalted items that are specific to you your highest chance might be the lightless arbor by dropping 700k gold uh stuff like that so yeah be creative think about it a little bit and uh i hope you guys kind of figure out how to play lost epoch and enjoy it as much as i do because i am having a absolute blast with it. All right. Take care, everybody.